So in this section, I wanted to do an additional little video to describe how you do um, one over one cross stitching is what most people call it. It can also be called petty point cross stitching or petty cross stitching or petite cross stitches. Um, it's usually done over one fabric uh, intersection. So as you can see here, um, this is done over one of these intersections right here. There's one thread going one way and one thread going this way. When we do cross stitching over two fabric threads or two vertical and two horizontal, we have no problem because the the threads will stay locked in place. But when you're working over one fabric intersection, sometimes it's really annoying. Sometimes your thread kind of slips underneath. Now, in order to start with our uh, crosses, what we want to do is to be sure that we have a good magnifying um, uh, lens and maybe even extra light because these stitches are going to be so small, particularly on 28 and 32 count linen. So um, as, as soon as you have a strong magnification, you're going to be able to reduce your eye strain and it allows you to see each stitch um, much, uh, much bigger. So it magnifies each stitch, which really helps. Also, I recommend that you use a working frame. So I work from right to left almost always, but I'll show you both ways. Working from right to left, you start here, and this is how you make your stitches. Now each stitch has a long arm on the back. Okay, so on the back, you'll, I'm going to turn over this fabric so that you'll see what I mean. I call it leading um, your stitches. In other words, you are making a stitch from here all the way to here on the back. Now I'm going to show you the back. So I've just flipped over the back and you can see that they actually look like half crosses, but they're covering two fabric threads. Right from here covers this fabric thread and this fabric thread to there. So there's a long stitch on the back of each one. Okay, when you're working half crosses, that's not the case. But we're not working half crosses, we are working what's called a tent, tent stitch, continental stitch. It's used most often in um, a needlepoint on canvas because they're, they're making their stitches over one intersection on canvas as well. So now this is going to be a little block of them and I'm also going to show you how to turn around. So because we're going to be working our way backwards here, we have to at some point make um, a short stitch on the back. So between there and there is a short stitch. But then I am already immediately turning around and again working backwards. It's the same effect. Since I'm working to the right this time, the stitch that I'm working has to lead on the right hand side and when I put my needle down I work backwards like this. So there's a long arm on the back this time as well. Now you can do the very exact same effect working upwards, up and down. And I'll show you how to do that. You immediately start here and go down there. See how I'm, le I'm going upwards, so I'm leading by bringing my needle up there and then going backwards uh, diagonally to complete the tent stitch or continental stitch. And again, there is long stitches on the back. So the long arms on the back are the real trick and if you can visualize the back and how it's working then it should be no problem at all working this out. There we go. So that's the main way of doing your petite cross stitches. Now if you want to make a stitch that's um, do one cross stitch at a time that's just as good because, of course, many of our overdyed threads require us to do the, the stitch right at the moment. And when I do that, I almost always start this way over a vertical thread this time. So I am going to make sure that my stitching um, comes up again here because my vertical thread will hold my stitching in place. There we go. Okay, now what if I were to come up as a single and I were to come up 
let's say I have to find a, a horizontal thread so I'm going to find one just above okay okay so now you can see that I'm coming up above a horizontal thread not a vertical thread now when I'm doing this I come down the same way I did before I always go down exactly the same way but instead of coming up here I come up here and that is because the horizontal thread is now holding my bottom stitch in place there's a loop on the back that you'll see. That's not using the long crosses or the long arms at the back, that's using the loop at the back. Okay, we'll do it one more time. Now here we are starting next to a vertical thread. Okay, and because I'm starting next to a vertical thread, I'm still going down this way. But now, because I'm starting next to a vertical thread, you want to be sure to come up here. Okay, also next to the vertical thread. So you're coming up to next to the vertical thread on the top both times. All right. Now, if I start on a in a space where there's going to be a horizontal thread that I'm stitching across. Let's see, is that one? Yes, that's a horizontal thread. And I go down over the thread like before. Okay, so that's good. But now I don't want to come up here like I did with the other one. No, I want to come up here so that the little loop that's formed between here, sorry, between here and here is um, uh, protected, sorry, by the horizontal thread. Okay, so that's, those are the two different ways of doing your crosses. So this is a diagram showing how you're going to be coming up uh, at one and going down at two. And then again, you've gone up and down here. Then you have a long stitch on the back. That's what I was talking about. We'll call that the long arm. And you come up there and down there. So you're leading um, in the direction that you're going. And this time we're working from left to right, but it works both ways. Whether you're working from right to left or left to right. If you're working from left to right, the direction in which you are going is where you put, bring up your needle. So this time we're working from left to right. So we're make sure, making sure that we're coming up here and going back down there. Again, the very same thing. Can you see the little dotted line? That's the, on the back. You, you basically have to make a long arm on the back. So in the previous diagram, you came down here at number six, completing the third stitch, this third stitch. Now you're going to be making a very short stitch, and this is the one that's needing to be short so that you can get started with number seven and eight. And you come up here with number seven and go down at number eight. And look, here you went down at number eight, then you make a long stitch on the back again, come up at 9, and go down at 10. Go down at 10, and then go all the way over to number 11, and come down at 12. So these diagrams give you the long arm effect. This diagram does um, one cross at a time, instead of a whole block of stitches. So you're coming up here and going down there. Notice this is the vertical thread, right here. So you're coming up there, going down there. Then you make a little um, loop at the back, or this is your um, working thread at the back, coming up there and going down there. Notice that this thread at the back here, this thread at the back, is going to be uh, guarded from slipping underneath by this vertical thread in the top. Okay, So you won't be able to, even if this is pulling this way, you won't be able to dislodge this cross. And this is the second one that you can do when you're working over a uh, horizontal thread. You are going to be, of course, the same way, coming up here, going down there. But instead of coming up here like you did over here, you're coming up there because you've got a horizontal thread to worry to, to guard against things. So this loop will go snug right up against this uh, horizontal thread. So then you're going down there, coming up here, and going down there. And I'm just going to show you how to work from left to right, just like I showed you in the um, diagrams. You're working from left to right, so your stitches have to go from left to right. And your first part of your stitch 
is on the right hand side and then diagonally to the left is the um, where you complete it. So you're leading at the right. Okay, your stitches are all um, pointing at the right. They come up at the right hand side of the stitch and go down backwards, kind of like a diagonal uh, back stitch. And of course at the back you'll find long arms. Remember the long arms. Now when you finish this you can go back over by starting here because you're going to be turning around and you have to basically make your stitch go from right to left now. So you're working this way. Again, this works the best if you've got a whole row of stitches that's all the same color. It's not variegated and gives you plenty and plenty of space to do this. If you're working um, a line, you can go up and down this way as well. I've shown you how to go up and down um, when you're working from right to left. But it's all exactly the same. No matter which direction you're pointing to, make sure that you bring your needle up uh, in the direction that you're moving. You're bringing your needle up at the top because we're moving towards the top. Our crosses are all heading up, right? So that's how you then make the long stitches at the back. I'm always conscious of making long stitches at the back and that's actually what I keep in mind most often. Making the long stitch at the back guards your stitches from slipping underneath the intersections. Good! I hope you have fun and that you enjoy your stitching as much as I do.